Welcome back guys, or if it's your first time watching one of my videos, my name is Chris. Recently I've been cutting up a lot of cedar lumber on the sawmill that I have and now it's time to actually start using what I've been cutting up for projects and I'm going to start by making four entrance posts to go into our farm. Uh, we have a fence that runs along the front of our farm and where it uh, meets at the driveway where you come into the farm. Um, I'm just going to make four posts. Um, nothing too spectacular, but just something a little fancier for when you actually enter into the farm than a regular fence post. So I'm going to get started on that now and show you how I'm going to build those. So I've put a line all the way around the post here and from the other end it's marked nine feet down. Um, that's because I want the post to be up five feet out of the ground and the other four feet is going to be buried below ground. So I've got the skill saw here. I'm going to follow my line all the way around, work my way around the log. I don't think it's going to get me all the way through, but there shouldn't be too much left and I'll grab a hand saw probably and just finish the, the cut off. After a bit of an internal struggle whether I should plane this all down and you know finish it and stain it or barathane it and everything like that, uh, kind of decided I'm just going to leave it with the rough sawn look. Um, I think it'll go in better with the rest of the fence and the surroundings kind of thing and match in better with that rather than having something that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb almost. So. Um, I'm going to start by mitering some 2x4s around the top, that will be the top and then I'll work my way down, um, put a bit of a border, just try to, um, I don't, like I was saying, I don't want it to stick out too much, but I just want these end posts to be a little bit fancier when you go into the driveway, so get started on that. So this is going to be the top of the post. I'm going to miter some 2x4s and put them around the very top, but to give me something to nail those into, I'm also going to miter some 2x2s right underneath it. And so I'm going to start by cutting all that up and then I'll put the two by, nail the 2x2s on first and then nail the 2x4s onto that. So this is basically the idea of the 2x4 is going to sit right on the top all the way around, 2x2 two two, right underneath it. So what I'm going to do is nail the 2x2 two two on first and then nail the 2x4 into that. So.
top section done anyways. It's going pretty good. Uh, it's hard when you want to be particular, but you're going for the rough lumber kind of look. So everything's not, it's not like planed lumber where you can get the miters perfect and everything. So I'm just kind of doing the best I can with the rough lumber and leaving it at that because we want the rustic look. We don't want it to look perfect, even though it's hard to not want to make it perfect, but I'm going to leave it at that. So now I'm going to work on the sides, bring them down almost five feet. And I'm just going to cut out the inside of some two by twos, bring them down all four sides and on the corners just to kind of give it a bit of a beefier look. Okay, so I've got a bunch of these two by twos here and what I'm going to do is set the table saw blade at three quarters of an inch high and I'm going to set it out from the fence three quarters of an inch also to the outside of the blade. And then I can just run my uh, two by two through there. It'll put a notch in, I'll flip it around, put another notch in, and it'll kind of hollow out this inside so it fits on the corner of my post. I'll do that and I'll uh, show you what I'm talking about. And there's what you end up with, the kind of V or L on the inside. So the idea now is that I can put it on the corner like this kind of thing on all four sides. And of course I'll cut it to length so that just the part that's out of the ground is like that on all four sides and then I can put a border on the bottom and that'll finish up a post. Okay, so this is that's basically what we're looking for. You can see up to four feet here. It's going to be buried underground, and then that gives me about four inches um, to where the post starts. So, you know, just a little bit of uh, forgiveness room for grass growing and whatnot until the uh, bottom starts here, and then that's what it kind of looks like going up the side and then that's the top so this is what they're looking like so far I think once I get them stood up and put in the ground they'll look not too shabby so now that I've got all the wire pulled away from here you can see I just have to pull this post up and this post up and depending how deep they're in the ground I may have to dig them down a little bit um, I'll have to do that by hand because 
as luck would have it there is an internet cable running right through where this box is and it is danger close to where this post is so there won't be any digging or augering or anything right next to this i'm gonna put it right back into the same hole so i make sure i do not make an expensive mistake i'll be good on this side you can see there's this tree here i'm just gonna pull it out with the back hoe and then it'll be the same process i'm gonna dismantle this post say everything will be the same on this side um so i'm gonna get to doing that now and i'll bring you guys back when i'm ready to pull these posts up out of the ground stuff taken out of here it's time that I can start putting these new posts back in um, there's basically two ways that I could have done this um, the first one is I could have just put the six by six post in the hole and then uh, did my build out and everything around it afterwards um, that would have made from here on out easier probably but uh, being out here, it's a pretty long driveway. There's no electricity out here. And uh, I just decided for me personally that doing it in the garage, the build out, all the tools are there. Um, doing that part first worked out better for me. Um, but on the flip side, both ways have their advantages and disadvantages. So it's gonna make this next part harder because I've already predetermined the height that each post needs to be which is four feet up out of the ground so ergo that is why i'm doing this step i'm uh basically gonna put this board from hole to hole level it and then see how far down each uh from the bottom is to each one and if i can get them both four feet down from the bottom of this then i'll know when i put those two posts into the hole they should both end up being fairly level which is what I'm going for um, it's an outdoor project it's not kitchen cupboard so it doesn't have to be laser level or anything but I want them to you know look good from uh, the road when you're driving in so that's what I'm going for anyways so that's pretty darn good So this hole's about 50 inches deep. This one's only 40, so I've got a few hand tools to dig this one about 10 inches deeper. Um, like I was saying before, the internet cable runs right beside that post hole. So that's why I'm not uh, using any heavy equipment or anything. I 
do not want this to be an expensive endeavor so i'm just going to use some hand tools to dig that out a little bit uh, a little bit of physical work's never bad for you anyways All right, so I got all four posts in the ground. I got all the dirt put back around them, packed in, leveled up and everything like that. So they're all good to go now. So all I have left to do is I'm gonna build a frame in between them out of wood that I've also cut off the sawmill. And I'm gonna get started cutting that up here. And I've already went measured the dimensions that I need. So I'll get them cut up and then take them back out to the uh, post at the end of the driveway and put it all together right there. Okay, so I've got all my pieces cut. I laid them out in the pattern that they're gonna be going up on the posts in. This is kinda what I'm going for. So obviously one post will be down this side, one post will be down this side, and this X will be standing up vertically in between the two posts. So I've just got it laying there kinda loosely. I wanted to make sure I was gonna be happy with it. I think I'm pretty content. Um, so I guess the next step is I'll just take these all over to um, the post and I'll assemble it there just to make sure it uh, goes together smoothly and I don't have any problems trying to, you know, if this is built a half an inch too big or something, I, I'm usually pretty good with my measurements, but um, from past lessons, I've learned not to put stuff like this together ahead of time because then um, it's a real pain if it's a little bit too big and you can't get it wedged in there. So I'm going to take it over uh, in pieces and assemble it on site.
So here's one side pretty much done. We got the old page wire hitched back up and uh, good to go here. And here's the other side of the driveway. Um, there's still a couple little details I want to take care of. Uh, I wanted to keep this level, but as you may or may not be able to tell, there is quite a slope downwards in this direction. And I have uh, built it up quite a bit with uh, fill so far, but it's been so wet the last few days, I don't want to drive up the edge of the field with the backhoe right now and make big ruts. So as soon as it dries up a bit, I'll uh, bring some more fill in just to level this off nicely and make it look a bit more aesthetically pleasing. The other little additions we're going to do is put some solar lights on top of the post here. Um, just had a little bit of concern with water getting down through the crack around the post here, sitting in there and not being able to dry out properly, even though it's cedar. Um, I just wouldn't really like to see that. So we're going to cover that up with some solar lights and seal it up so no water can get down in there. Well, guys, that's everything for me today. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time.